The greatest Jewish month of the modern era, undoubtedly, is this month of Iyar. Two incredible days. One would have been totally remarkable, yet two. The fifth of Iyar, the return to a sovereign state of Israel for the first time in 2000 years, as we know, in 1948. And this coming week, the 28th of Iyar, the return to Yerushalayim, a united city of Yerushalayim. And for me, I think more than anything, what the month of Iyar in the modern era and a state of Israel to return to Jerusalem has done for the Jewish people, for our psyche, is a sense of self-worth, a sense of pride, a sense in belief in ourselves, a sense of vindication after so much suffering for the Jewish people, so much downtroddenness. Look what has become in the modern era of Jewish history and Jewish destiny. I, I can't tell you how many people I keep meeting in the streets of Yerushalayim and in Israel who tell me, Rabbi, I made Aliyah or my family made Aliyah. My parents or my grandparents made Aliyah in the wake of 1967. Somehow after the Six Day War, after those six remarkable days in June, something changed in, in, in world history and in Jewish history. The author Michael Oren, Six Days of War, Yossi Klein Alevi, other famous authors and so many others say we made Aliyah because of these dates. Famously, uh, Anatoly Sharansky, Natchez Sharansky wrote, he said, when I was sitting in the Russian gulag and I was standing against the impossible odds of the Soviet regime, he said, when I heard that in six days the Jewish people were able to return against all odds to Yerushalayim, I believed that I could do it to uh, transform my life and in a sense transform the leadership of Soviet Jewry to do the impossible and the unexpected against all odds. And for me, the key word in all of this is a word which appears once in the Torah, a very powerful word, a word which appears as the crescendo, the ultimate pinnacle of blessing in the beginning of Parashat Pachukotai, where God says, I'll bring you back to the land and I'll give you plenty and abundance and, and uh, peace and all the blessings and spiritual blessings. He says, I will break the yoke of your burden and I will go with you. And Rashi says, what is komamiyut? Komas Kufa, an uprightness, a sense of freedom, says the Targum, a belief in ourselves. In fact, and the Nitziv says, the great Nitziv of Elohim says that it's the opposite of the yoke of the ox. An ox is always down, the yoke is, is downtrodden, and one's able to lift oneself up out of the depths of despair. After we came out of the, the last thousand years of the Crusades, the Inquisitions, the Chilmaniki massacres, the ghettos, the pogroms, and the worst of all, the Shoah, out of the dusts of the yoke, downtrodden and bent down, being able to come for the, the first Komas Kufa of being able to have the sense of confidence and belief and vindication in 1948, physical freedom. And then again, our spiritual destiny 19 years later in 1967 is remarkable. I will take you out of the downtrodden reality of what has been so much suffering in, 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 in Jewish history to this new era that of brimming with hope of Komamiyut for a new future. And may we, as we celebrate together, join us in our celebrations that we'll have our live Mizrahi camera here in Yerushalayim with the tr tremendous Rikud Galim dancing in the streets of Yerushalayim and celebrating all of us together from afar. And we hope and pray that people will be able to join very soon in person from around the world, celebrating the miracles of 1967 and the fact that today we live in a time of self-dignity, self-belief, pride in being Jewish, which should ultimately bring hope, not only for the Jewish people, but indeed, for all of humanity. Shabbat Shalom, Yom Yerushalayim Sameach.